Welcome to another edition of From the Press Box, heard every Monday, 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. right here on 90.3 WHPC, the voice of Nassau Community College. We are part of the WHPC Sports Talk family. Every Monday through Friday, 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. is Sports Talk. There's an additional show on Tuesdays, 10 p.m. to midnight, and of course, us every Monday, 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. I'm Rob Leonard. Joining me, of course, is my brother Tim, award-winning sports writer. Hello, brother. How are you? Hello, brother. I am outstanding, as usual. How are you? The um, Yankees are in the playoffs, and uh, and and we still have uh, we still have no wins in football. That's um, but the Yankees are in the playoffs. <laughs> well, you know, there's 16 teams this year, Tim. How could they not be? You know. Well, you, you know, asked that I question, mean, brother, but the Mets aren't. <laughs> I know, but the Mets could have been if they had actually uh, done something this week. Yes, if they would have won well, about week, ten more say. games. If they would have won well, ten more games, they would have been in the playoffs. Well, that's you know, out of sixty, that's not so bad. So coulda, coulda, woulda, shoulda. <laughs> yeah. Well. Anyway, um, we're going to talk about uh, the the horrible football in New York right now. Of course, we're talking about the Yankees. And, um, of course, later on, brother, we've been trying to talk about the Islanders since they lost in the playoffs and what they need for the upcoming season. But we keep running out of time. If we get to that, we get to that. If not, yeah, we should get to that. Let's get yeah, to we'll, that. We should. So where do we start, brother? It's, it's so sad. Uh, you know, um, football in New York. You know, well, is, if you want to start with good news, brother, we can start with the Yankees. The Yankees? They're it's good not really news. good news. It's not good news for me, brother. Why not? Uh, Be happy, you know. brother. Be happy. Embrace the Yankees. Why? Embrace, embrace New York's only playoff team. I'm I'm a I'm a Mets fan. Why would I embrace the Yankees? I, well, I did it '96. If you remember, remember we went to uh, we went to Yankee Stadium. You, me, and Suzanne. We sat in the bleachers, or not the well, not the creatures, but the other. That bleachers. was the world. That was the World Series game, brother. The World yes. Series game, game two, where, which they lost. Where Greg Maddox was outstanding against the Yankees, and the umpire. Called the strike zone the size of a grapefruit for Jimmy Key, and, yeah, well, and just screwed the Yankees royally in that game. But yeah, yeah. I, I, I do remember a little bit about that game. Oh, just a little bit, brother. <laughs> so anyway, um, okay, let's start off with the Yankees. They're in the playoffs. Um, first of all, I have to say, for, except for a couple of teams, brother, uh, Major League Baseball uh, seemed to live with the uh, Corona nineteen. Virus. Only a couple of teams got caught up in not following the rules, and by following the rules, uh, seemingly no one really got sick, uh, and no one died, at least in Major League Baseball. Oh, and that's positive. That is a positive. So, you know, I I'm not sure how they're going to do the playoffs. Uh, I, it's, we know there's going to be a bubble on this one, uh, but you sort of have to do it, you know. You want it to be in good weather. But you know what? If you're starting now, you know, this is when the playoffs would have started anyway. So More or less, yeah. That this is yeah, why so, this is why baseball wanted to then when they were when when the whole bickering with the players was going back and forth, that the owners stood firm as far as we need to end the season on this date in, in September because they they worked it backwards. And and the fear among the owners was that the second wave was coming. And, I mean, let's face it, the first wave really never ended as, as far as this, this country goes. Um, and, and uh, you know, you, you, all you have to do is look as far as that idiot governor in Florida to see that. But yep. right now we're in a situation where, you know, the concern was, well, when the fall comes, the second wave is going to hit, and we don't want, to, we don't want our playoffs to be compromised because, I mean, you're talking about the World Series is going to be – it's scheduled for, for Arlington from October 20th to the 28th. So that's a month from now. Um, so, you know, before that, you have you have playoffs. And, and there's going to be uh, eight teams, the, the expanded playoffs, uh, eight teams per league. And they'll play – you know, they'll, they'll play uh, – I think it's – I, I want to say best of five. It doesn't even say on the MLP website. Nice job, MLB. Um, but – it, there, that's you know we, we're looking at it right now. I'm looking at the Yankees, and the Yankees will face the Cleveland Indians, which I wow. didn't think was going to happen. I thought the Yankees might face the Twins, um, but the uh, the Twins wound up winning the Central Division. So now the Yankees have to face the Cleveland Indians and that and that nasty rotation that the Cleveland Indians have. 
Um, so, you know, basically we are looking at uh, best of three series, I think it is. Okay, I'm going to have to check this out. But um, the the series will begin uh, tomorrow, Tuesday, September 29th, New York at Cleveland. Although, you know, this is going to be at um, yeah, it's at, yeah, it's at Cleveland. Um, game one is everything right now is still kind of TBD um, as far as when, but uh, or what time? But um, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. The the thing about these playoffs, brother, and and the Indians get the advantage of having all of the games at home. They're not they're not coming back to New York for any games. So if okay. you were one of the top teams, and this was what the Yankees were kind of playing for what they should have been playing for. Um, then you got a home, you know, home series. And that's what, that's what the Indians wound up getting. All the, all the, uh, the division winners got a home series. And then the, the next best record got the home series. So, you know, not, not so good for the Yankees, but that being said, you know, you, you look at, you look at how they played this season and, and, I can't. I can't really say they deserved it. They they had that stretch where they went five and fifteen. That's a third of the season where they were playing, you know, terrible baseball. Really, I mean, they lost what seven or eight in a row. Um, they they kind of rallied. Even this last week, though, they they won. They won. What was it? One out of their last five or one of their last six games. So they kind of limped towards the finish line after having after winning ten in a row, um, you know, a, a couple weeks ago. But they, they really did limp towards the finish line here, um, thirty three and twenty seven. And we said we said before the season started that a team probably would need to be a little bit over five hundred, thirty one wins or so to get to the playoffs, and and that proved to be correct for everybody except the Houston Astros. The Houston Astros are twenty nine and thirty one, and they made the playoffs. And and the same goes for the Milwaukee Brewers in the National League twenty twenty nine and thirty one. They are a playoff team. So. You know, I mean, that's to me, that's a little embarrassing. It's it's it's, it's almost NBA like. You can remember, uh, you know, not so long ago, where, where teams would make the NBA playoffs and have and have a losing record. Right, um, right, right. I, I, I personally, my own opinion, I, I think your playoffs are diminished when you have teams with losing records in the playoffs. Uh, yeah, but I understand. You know, especially this year, brother. This the playoffs are not made for the players; they're made for. The networks that show these t- uh, games because oh, of course. Of course. they're going to they're going to claim that the like, major league baseball is going to claim to these networks. Oh, these are the playoffs, and we're giving you, or we're going to make up for the games we didn't you didn't show because they're playoff games, and that's why there's 16 teams this year. And I will not be surprised if major league baseball somehow adopts this as their future. 16 teams um, in the playoffs, you know, might be better to do a one and out for the first round, but they're not going to do that. Uh, two well, out of but, three. But two if, out of three would be better. Yeah, but if if they do this for the future, that means they're going. They would have to reduce the regular season because you can't you can't do this um, for you know to have 162 games and then go to to a, an eight teams per league playoff because I mean you wouldn't. There's no way to finish it before November or, or that, no, like you're into right, November. They, no, you're right, and um, you know. It, it'd be a tougher thing to figure out, but I think the, the, you know, the networks want more playoffs. You know that they always want of course, more playoffs. Of course. And I think Major League Baseball is just looking to jumpstart the game a little bit, and I think this would be a, a great way for them to do it. You know, well, uh, one thing about the Yankees, though, you have to say, brother, they're all not injured right now. They've been injured most of the year. You know, one player or two players or five players, depending on the day of the week. Um, so. Uh, this is very good timing for them, you know, to come back and say, "Okay, we're ready." You know. Well, I mean that 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 right now is is pretty much, pretty much the only positive for the Yankees. Um, you know, they'll they'll come into this series uh, most for the most part healthy. Now that being said, Giancarlo Stanton is healthy, but he also has struck out in in close to half of his at bats since he came off the injured list. Um, Aaron Judge, since since coming off the injured list, really hasn't hit very well. Um, his, his power has has not been there. Uh, so, and and you know, I've I've seen him run. I mean, he had the calf thing, and and you know, I mean, he he really hasn't. He doesn't look comfortable on the field. I don't know if it's still 
the calf thing is still going on. Uh, but he he really is not moving as well as as he could. Um, Aaron Judge nine games since he came off the off of the injured list, uh, batting two oh six with no home runs and two RBIs. He's seven for thirty four, one double among his extra base hits. I mean that's that's not Aaron Judge. I mean that's that's, that's a that's that's a you know that's that's a you know just a, a shell of, of what Aaron Judge or what we're expecting from Aaron Judge. But that being said, Aaron Judge and Giancarlo Stanton can erase the regular season just by getting hot in the playoffs and carrying the Yankees. And and obviously both of these guys are capable of doing that. Um, you know this, this Reggie Jackson always always used to say. Um, you know, you, you, talk, you talk about what the Yankees do in October. The regular season almost doesn't matter, but it's what is what the Yankees do in October. And you know, it, it's not quite October yet, but it might as well be because the postseason starts in, in in you know just a couple of days. Right. Uh, so, you know, when you look at it that way, that's that's where we are right now, and that's what we're talking about. Is this is October, and this is when this is when the Yankees are supposed to play their best ball. Um, you know, Tuesday, September 29th, it's, it's again, not October. October 1st will be game three, and, and you know, hopefully there isn't a game three because the Yankees win the first two. But, you know, if there's a game three needed, and, and more than likely there will be, I think I think it's going to be a lot of game threes. Um, but that's what you're looking at as, as, as the big game, and that's really, you know, that's October baseball, or that will be October baseball because that's going to be on October 1st. Uh, so, you know, it's a, it's a quick first series. A lot of teams that have been playing and, and grinding for 60, uh, 60 games are, are going to very suddenly be out of the postseason. And then uh, and then after that, the American League teams go to San Diego and Los Angeles for uh, – for they'll be in a bubble in those two places. And the National League teams will go to Arlington and Houston, and they will be in a bubble in those places. Right. Um, then the World Series will be played in Arlington – um, like I said, from October 20th to 28th. Uh, why uh, Arlington? I mean, you know, I, 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 it's got to be weather because, you know, we know Texas has not done well with COVID and they're still not doing well. Um, so I, I, I really couldn't tell you why Arlington, why Texas, um, unless it's just it's a matter of um, hotels and convenience and just the, the capabilities of putting a bubble together because you could put a bubble together in New York, but there's so many people, you know, and, and how, how would you put anybody in a bubble in New York when if, if somebody, you know, somebody wants to go outside, then you're immediately, there's, there's tons of people everywhere. Good point. I mean, you know what? Arlington is not the most, uh, I'm sure people in Arlington will disagree, but it's not the most spectacular city to hang out right. in. Where if you're in New York City or even Los Angeles or San Diego, you probably say, "Oh, look at this! The weather's fantastic." Well, yeah, I, I mean, L- L.A. The the only difference with L.A. and New York is obviously L.A. There's tons of people as well, but it's so spread out, and it, it's you know it, it's it's not that crushed. There's no. I challenge anybody to show me where downtown L.A. is. It doesn't exist. So Wilshire, you, Wilshire you can, Boulevard. Well, you can put people. They, 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 you know, the players don't stay on Wilshire Boulevard. So no, no. You know, they, they, you can put teams into into a hotel and and have that hotel be kind of sequestered from the general population. Um, you know, I mean, the the NHL and the NBA have have done it fantastically. Um, you know, the NHL has, has been uh, been in Edmonton and Toronto. And the NBA is down in Florida with the, with the Disney uh, complex, so you know that was their way of doing it. But I, I don't know that they would have been able to do it with baseball for uh, for Florida. Yeah, I can understand that. I mean, you know, it's and and now with the the governor, you know, opening and everything in Florida. Oh, let's let's see how many people get sick this week. Yeah, and that um, you know that probably had something to do with the decision. Is you know what a what a reckless idiot he is because he just he just doesn't want to acknowledge that there is this this you know life threatening virus out there. Oh yeah, let's just open everything. And uh, you know, are you looking at numbers or do you see the the percentage of of positive tests and do you see how many people are dying in your state 
every day. It, it's it's just it's mind boggling to me that that somebody can be you know, so cavalier and 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 so callous. Um, as right, to put right. people at risk and, and just just refuse to acknowledge the risk that's there. But I, I, don't, I don't want I don't want to talk about him, DeSantis. What an idiot he is. Um, yeah. But anyway, like I said, baseball. Uh, Garrett Cole will, will clearly and obviously start Game One for the Yankees. Um, I, I expect that uh, Masahiro Tanaka will start Game Two, um, and then you know I don't know who's going to start Game Three. If Paxton was healthy and, and available, I'd say, yeah, Paxton's the guy, and let's let's turn him loose. I, I think it's probably going to be Jay Happ, and and you know he's pitched well um, in 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 his last uh, you know month or so, month and a half. Ever, ever since Brian Cashman aired him out publicly and said, you know, he uh, Happ was upset because uh, he wasn't going to make uh, his his. Uh, the number of starts he needed to trigger a bonus clause in his contract so that he would be guaranteed $17 million from the Yankees next year. And the Yankees didn't want to trigger the bonus because at that point he was pitching to something like a five-and-a-half ERA and he wasn't being effective. And last right. last year he wasn't effective either. So why would the Yankees want to pay him another $17 million? But as soon as that happened and Hap, like I said, Hap got aired out by, by Cashman and I had no problem with Cashman doing it. But ever since then, Happ has been pitching great. He's been outstanding. He's been the Yankees' second best pitcher since uh, since all that happened. Now he still didn't make his his bonus clause, so he's going to have to earn a contract for next year. I don't think it's I don't think it's going to be with the Yankees either way. But at least he he showcased himself, and and you know another start in the playoffs would would be certainly would be a, a, a great thing. But that being said, if I'm the Yankees and I have a one game for my season. Is Jay Happ the guy I want on the mound? Right, right. I, 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 I really, I really don't. So where do you go? I mean, I don't think they're going to put Jordan Montgomery out there. He has, he's been okay. He really certainly hasn't been good. Um, and do, do you put Davy Garcia, the young twenty-one-year-old? Do you put him out there for for what would be a critical game? The kid, the kid's pitched what five major league games. Twenty-one years old. Do you throw him out there and say, Davy, go get him, kid? So. Yeah, I don't know. It's uh, there. There's there's certainly uh, certainly some decisions that uh, that are going to need to be made. Right. Um, right. That uh, I'm glad I don't have to make them because uh, you know the Yankees seem to be short uh, kind of one pitcher at this point. Well, um, it's let's uh, let's move on, brother. We got other things to get to. Um, the Mets. Uh, now, last week, maybe they could have uh, made the playoffs if they won every game of the week, but they did not do that. Nice. Um, no, the big story for the Mets is going to be uh, the fact that Steve Cohen was going to own the majority of the Mets and more than a good chance that Sandy Alderson will be uh, back with the Mets doing something. We're not sure exactly what yet. He's going to be making most of the baseball decisions, is what he's going to be doing. It's yeah. you know, base, basically, uh, basically, you're going to see the end of the Brody Van Wagen and error, not error, but error. Yeah. Um, as as soon as, as soon as uh, Steve Cohen is approved by by the owners, uh, either that or, or Brody is is going to going to be pushing a mop somewhere in City Field because that's going to be his only uh, his only job. But uh, I think Brody's probably going to go back to being an agent and, and say, well, you know, it was. It was a great experience. That's what he's going to say. Um, but you know, that's uh, that's that's where we are with, uh, with with the Mets as far as Cohen and and I don't. Know. I mean, it's uh, it's going to be interesting when when they finally get to the whole process of putting you know putting putting that deal together and and what is what you know what is it. I, I think I think Cohen is going to be approved, even though he does have some, uh, let's say, sketchy business in his past. Um, but you know, what? Where do you go from there? Um, the Alderson thing, I think, was a good move. I think it was kind of an olive branch for Cohen to extend to the owners to say, "Look, I'm going to put a, a solid major league guy and, and have him run the team." And and that is something. I mean, Sandy Alderson. There's nobody in Major League Baseball that doesn't like Sandy Alderson. And it's it's a it's a good move from Cohen to gain himself 
um, I don't know. Credibility isn't necessarily the right word, but it, it respect, gains, respect, it, yeah, not even respect. It, it it gains him maybe some trust, some uh, some. It, it just tells the other owners, look, I'm going to do this the right way. And 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 obviously Brody is is not that guy. Although I'm sure the other owners would love to have Brody around for a while, can have him make more dumb trades. Um, but there was something, brother, and, and this was something I said on the show a few weeks ago. Uh, is that apparently the Mets did make uh, make at least a, an inquiry about the availability of Brian Cashman? Yeah, I don't see that happening. But no, I mean it's not going to happen. The Yankees said no, and and, and I, I'm sure Cashman probably also said no. But Cashman's on the contract for another two years. So if Cohen wanted Brian Cashman to come to the Mets, first of all, he'd have to get the Yankees' permission to talk to Cashman. Secondly, right, right. He, secondly, he would have to compensate the Yankees. He would have to send them. A player or a few million dollars or something. I mean, the Mets it would it would it would wind up having to be a trade. Um, but the Yankee, like I said, the Yankees were, were said said them say no. That's that's not going to happen. So um, you know that's 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 where that is. But I think Sandy Alderson is is a is a good way to go. Um, you know, Theo Epstein was also mentioned amongst uh, the possible GM candidates, and I, I just think that would be an awful fit. And and the reason being. Theo Epstein has done well in places, and, and places by places, I mean Boston and Chicago. Obviously, yes. those both of those places, long, long droughts for World Series. But Theo Epstein went in. Both of those teams had good clubs to start with, much like the Mets do. The Mets have a pretty good club. They're 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 better than their record. But Theo Epstein also had elite prospects to trade. And use right. as chips to bring in what he needed for those teams. Uh, that's how the Yankees got Glaber Torres. You know, they 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 sent Araldis Chapman to the Cubs, and the Cubs needed a closer to win a World Series. The Yankees got Glaber Torres for it. That was a, it turned out to be a gr- good trade for everybody. Cubs won a World Series. The Yankees have a shortstop for the next ten years. Um, but it was the same with the Red Sox when Theo got there. He he signed a lot of free agents, like he did with the Cubs as well. But he signed. He spent a lot of money. And then by the time he le- he left the Red Sox, and I don't know how much longer he's got with the Cubs, but he has put both of those teams in a situation where their payrolls were extraordinarily high and their farm systems were basically drained of talent. And that's where he is now with the Cubs. If the Cubs really don't have much as far as minor leaguers. The Mets, though, the Mets don't have any minor leaguers because Brody Van Wagenen basically copied the Theo Epstein model and traded pretty much every decent minor leaguer he had except uh, for the Peterson kid, um, who actually has turned into a pretty decent pitcher and should be in the rotation next year. But that kid aside, the, the Mets really don't have a whole lot in terms of prospects. They have the, the Jimenez kid, who really, I mean, probably is somebody's going to have to get traded because um, the Mets have shortstop prospects everywhere, but they don't necessarily have as far as trade chips, they got so so one one of those shortstops is going to need to be traded. Whether it's uh, Jimenez or Rosario, you know somebody somebody's got to go because you you can't either that or they're going to have to teach one of those guys how to play the outfield because you know you can't you can't have you can't have three shortstops. As far as the Mets go, that's what we're looking at. Is the the next big day or date for the Mets is is going to be the approval of Steve Cohen. As the new owner, Net fans right. will celebrate. They will. They will all cheer and, and get giddy and 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 dream about four hundred million dollar payrolls. That dream will never come true. But expect Steve Cohen to be more aggressive than the Wilpons. The Mets. The Mets days wow. of poverty are over. That much I can tell you. But right. they're going to. They're going to. They'll, they'll be. They will be. A, a, I, I predict that the Mets will be a New York team now. They're not going to play like the Minnesota Twins or operate like the Minnesota Twins. They will use their financial might, um, probably in a very similar way to, the, to what the Yankees and the Dodgers and the Red Sox and the Cubs do, and major cities like that. I, I expect Steve Cohen to be one of those one of those players in that group. Um, but yeah, the four hundred million dollar payrolls? No, it's not going to happen. It's just not. No, I, it's, I, I don't it's expect absurd. it, but I do expect a. Blockbuster trade sometime. No, don't. What, down who, the road. All right, but who are they going to trade? The Mets I don't, don't have know. anything. The Mets don't have anything to trade <clears throat> for a blockbuster. 
That's the problem. They really didn't. When they, I, what I'm thinking is like it's like the time when the Mets got uh, Piazza. That was a blockbuster trade, and they really didn't give up. But they gave up Preston Wilson. You know. Yeah, but they had they had prospects that other teams were interested in. Right, that's, but you know, that's what I'm talking about. When when you have, see them giving away when, something, but when you have prospects, you can make trades like that. The Mets right now, uh, you know, they, they have. They have four prospects. I'm just looking at MLB.com right now. They have four prospects who are in the top 100. The top one of those is a shortstop by the name of Ronnie Mauricio, who is 19 years old. So if somebody loves Ronnie Mauricio, then, yeah, maybe they make that. Maybe they make some kind of a trade or, or they'll take him. Then they have a catcher by the name of Francisco Alvarez, who, right. who is uh, just behind Ronnie Mauricio. Mauricio is 58. Alvarez, 59, on the MLB.com top 100. Then Jimenez is number 83, and we saw a little bit of him during this, this season. And and Brett Beatty, the kid was the number one pick, um, was it last year or two years? No, two, I think it was two years ago. Brett Beatty, third baseman, uh, 20 years old, 6'3", 210, supposed to be a decent power hitter coming in. But, again, he, he's, a, he's a guy who is you know, at least two or three years away. So all of these guys – with the, with the exception of him, and as like I said, we saw him this year. But the other three are at least two or three years away. I mean, two of them are teenagers still. So these these are guys that, that that other teams really would have to covet in order to to want to give away players. And and I don't right. know, I don't know how many players like that there are. You know, like let's put it this way: for what what the Dodgers gave up to get Mookie Betts, it would take more than these four guys. So yeah, how do you enough. make a blockbuster if you don't have the chips to give away? If they still had Jared Kalanick, the guy they gave to Seattle in the Cano trade, yeah, then you're talking. Then you're talking about a big deal prospect where you can say, all right, well, we're looking for help now, and we're willing to give you Kalanick for him. Well, they, they did that already. So, you know, the, you, only, you only get so many, so many, so many tries at, at deals like that, and, and Brody screwed it up. <laughs> yeah, you got to love him. So I, you know, I, I disagree with you as far as a big trade. I think I think I could see a big signing. You know, I, I certainly could see the Mets being being aggressive in the free agent market this year, and, and I certainly could see free agents waiting and and not being too too eager to sign until after Cohen is approved and takes over the day to day business because they're 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 right. expecting that to ha- to happen sometime around mid November. So, you know, that the season's the season's going to be over a few weeks by the time that happens. Right, right. And, and obviously, you know, obviously it's very rare that that you have a free agent sign, you know, right after the World Series, but, you know, I mean, let Cohen get settled, get everything together, put a staff in place. Now it's December. So, now you're starting to talk to free agents. So, I could see something like that happening, or, you know, unless uh, unless he has Sandy get off uh, get off to a uh, uh, something of a running start as far as talking to free agents, but you know it's going to be interesting. I mean, George George Springer is going to be out there. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of who else. I mean, the Mets desperately need pitching. You saw that this year. We know that. <laughs> so, you know, Syndergaard is, is coming back um, from from the Tommy John. Degrom is Degrom. He's 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 the least of the, of the Mets' worries. But after DeGrom and Syndergaard, there's nothing. Steven Matz had a nine-something ERA this season. Now, granted, 60 games, it still is a small sample size, but his ERA was nine. I, you know, I don't care how small the sample size is. That's awful. So, oh, it is. It is. I'm not saying you know, another Peters, one. Peterson gives, you, gives the Mets a third starter, but Porcello and Waka, they were both bad, and I don't see any reason to bring either one of them back. Um you know, I mean, and if if you're going to be a contending team, you you need you need. I'm not going to say you need two great starters, but you need two pretty good starters. You need you need you need some depth in the rotation. You can't just sign you can't sign like a Waka and a Porcello and then cross your fingers and hope for the best. That's not what well, contenders do. Uh, no, I agree. I, I and, agree. And, and there are no pitchers in the minor leagues for the Mets. Those they they, they don't exist. Okay, well, so. yeah, Mets need a lot of work, uh, you know, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see where it goes. Yeah, I mean, my, I mean, it's a limited game season, but Conforto batted uh, 
three twenty two this season. Nine Before it was good this year. Yeah. yeah, he was good. He if you if you extrapolate his numbers, he was he was looking at about a a thirty ninety kind of a season, and with it with a three well, you know with a three twenty average. That's there's nothing wrong with that. I would like to see the kid the kid get a hundred RBIs, but you know there's nothing wrong with with putting you know three twenty thirty ninety. No, that, no, that'll, no. That'll, that'll make that'll make you a lot of money. <laughs> Yeah, so I mean that's good for him. I, I like the guy, and um, I, I do hope he uses this year to increase what he should be doing when he first showed up. You know, you get you get that nice player that seems to want to be here and do it right to it. So I, I like Conforto a lot. You know, so I mean, it, it's right now. It's you know, like I said, George Springer is available if the Yankees want to try to upgrade the outfield and get get a real center fielder. Um, Starling Marte is another guy, although he's he's 32. He's starting to get up there a little bit. Um, he, he's also going to be a free agent, although uh, there is a club option the Marlins have for $12.5 million, which I would expect them to exercise that option. Starling Marte for $12 million is, is, is a bargain. Um, you know, but there's not right field. I don't know. Yasiel Puig, I don't know if the Mets if the Mets want to deal with, with, with the ego. Um Giancarlo Stanton can opt out, although he said he, he isn't planning to, and uh, I, I know a lot of Yankee fans wish he would uh, <laughs> to get out of that contract. Yeah, why um, would you? Well, he wouldn't. There's no way he will. I mean, no, he, it's he, not like A Rod who felt, "Oh, I'll get more money," and actually did. Yeah, you know? but his body, his body's breaking down, and believe me, if he uh, if he decides to opt out, the Yankees would be thrilled. Oh, of course. So, uh, so. And I'm just looking down the list of pitchers. Trevor Bauer would be a great signing. I don't know how much he would cost, though. He's, he said that he wants to go on one-year contracts. I could see Trevor Bauer easily getting $35 million on a one-year contract. Wow. That's, that's, how, that's, how, that's how good a pitcher he has become. Uh, there, there's, not, there's not a ton, of, a ton of pitchers here. There's a lot of old pitchers and a lot of guys who've got a lot, a lot of mileage on their arms. Um, you know, do the Mets take a chance on Paxton after his injury uh, history with the Yankees? I don't know, but he he'd be a good one. Do they do they try to re-sign Strowman? And do they go? You know, do they do they uh, go down that avenue? Um, I don't know. There's uh, it's it's going to be there's going to be a lot of food for thought here, brother. It's going to be yeah. uh, going to be a lot to talk about in the uh, in the coming weeks and months. Anyway, let's talk uh, football Sunday. Zero and three for both the Giants and the Jets now. Um, the Giants lost to the 49ers 36-9. to And then the Jets said, hey, we can do worse than that, and they yeah. lost 36-7. to The Jets said, hold my beer. <laughs> yeah, and uh, and the Giants got a safety, too. I mean, I'm sorry, the... Um, the, the, the Colts got the, a safety against the Jets. No, it was the Colts? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yes, that's right. Sam so, Donald. You know. Yes. Yeah, there was... I mean, I don't know. Which one do you want to talk about first, brother? I don't know. Um, I don't know. I, I think I think let's talk about uh, the, the Giants oh, first. They were the first game. Look at this, bro. I'm just I'm just I just I just literally as we're doing this, just caught a glance at the NFC East standings. Yeah, Washington and Dallas are tied for first place with one and two records. <laughs> wow, this is going to be the worst division in football. Uh, uh, last year they were too. So the Eagles, the Eagles are o two and one because they tied. Uh, they tied, uh, who was it, Cleveland or something? Uh, no, the Bengals. I'm sorry, the Bengals, even worse. Uh, that was 23 to 23 for the Eagles and the Bengals. But the Giants, uh, you know what? I, 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 for some reason, I feel worse for the Giants than I do for the Jets. Well, because, it went, at halftime, it was 6 6. Yeah, I mean, the Giants today, it, was, it, it certainly wasn't horrible. You know, yes. they were in the game. It wasn't six six. It was sixteen to six. But six, six, they, six. They, you know they they were in the game. It was it wasn't. They weren't getting blown out. They weren't getting pushed all over the field. It was just. But you knew that they that the Giants weren't going to win. They don't they don't have the depth. They're they're you know since Saquon Barkley got hurt, the, the running game is a disaster. You know Daniel Jones was the Giants' leading rusher today with with, with forty nine yards on five. Yesterday, Tim. Oh, I'm sorry. Yesterday, my my bad. Um, so, but you know, Daniel Jones it, it, it should never be your leading rusher. You know, yes, I know he likes to carry the ball and he can do some things in, in the, the run pass option and whatnot. But I, I don't want him being my leading rusher. He shouldn't be. Um, 
the the 49ers are playing without Jimmy Garoppolo. They're playing without uh, uh, Bosa. They're playing without Solomon Thomas. You know, Nick Mullins was, was the quarterback for, for the San for, for the San Francisco 49ers. Uh, you know, who knows who Nick Mullins is? But he threw for 343 yards and a touchdown. Right. So, right. so you know, good for him. Well, let me ask you a question, brother. Yes, Let's yes. say last year Eli doesn't retire. Okay. And you know, the, the Giants side. Oh, he's still going to be our lead guy, and. You know, right now, let's say it would be Eli getting destroyed instead of Daniel Jones. You know, yeah, you think about that, and it's like, you know, a lot of people were against Eli retiring last year. I was one of them, actually. Um, I, but I thought he should, but I thought he should have went to another team. I, I think he should have followed older brother Peyton and uh, get why. Go to I mean, team. You, know, you have to remember, brother. NFL players get, you know, they they literally get the crap beat out of them on a weekly basis, especially quarterbacks. I mean, right, you're a quarter, no. When you're a quarterback and you you your your movement is limited, let's face it, Eli has never been a speed guy. He's never been a scramble guy. He's never been that guy who used his legs to his advantage. It was always about his arm, his arm right. and his vision. Now, those were the two things that, that kept Eli Manning from getting killed. And now, I mean, could he have played more? Sure. But Eli Manning is a guy who, who made something around $250 million from playing football. Why go elsewhere? You know, he, he lives in New Jersey. He likes being in New Jersey. His family's in New Jersey. He, he had no reason to go anywhere else to pick up, what, another $5 million? Just to prove, you know, sometimes you, gotta, you just want to prove. There's nothing to prove. You know, just, like, just like when Peyton. He's I won two Super Bowls. Peyton Peyton didn't want to retire on an injury. That was his thing. And and the the Colts at that point had just drafted – Andrew Luck, Peyton saw the writing on the wall, just like Eli saw the writing on the wall. But if Peyton hadn't gotten hurt, there's a good chance he would have retired. But the all, the other thing you have to also remember with Peyton, he was chasing career records. You know, he was he was he was you know chasing number one all time passing yards. Eli wasn't. That's a good point. Eli Eli's got true. no. Eli had no. You know, Eli's standing in the game will always be appreciated, and his, and his name is is fairly high up on a lot of lists because he played so many games and, and he lasted for such a long time, but he wasn't chasing you know, that kind of greatness. Eli Manning will be in the Hall of Fame. And people, people, some, some Giants fans laugh when I say that, but for as long as he did it and he won two Super Bowls, that gets you to the Hall of Fame. Yeah, I think so. so. I think you know, they'll, so he, they'll he overlook have, the last two years. He, he didn't have any of that stuff to prove and he certainly doesn't need the money. So there was no reason for him. I mean, did, could did he probably think in his mind, yeah, I could play another season or I could maybe play another two seasons? He probably did. I, I don't know too many athletes who, who, when they retire, they don't still think, yeah, I can still do it. But Eli was smart because you see guys, you see Jim McMahon, Brett Favre, you know, I mean, there are so many quarterbacks out there who, whose brains are, are just a mess right now. You know, Brett Favre is, is going through, you know, and, and Jim McMahon especially is going through like early onset dementia. Yep. The and and they're still they're still young guys. Dude, like McMahon is is older, but he's still he's not an old guy. But he has said he forgets where he's going, and it's not just you know like, you know, being a goofy old guy. It's a matter it's a it's a matter of getting popped too many times and, sure. and have, having injuries and and concussions. So. You know, Eli didn't want to do that, and I can't blame him. He got, he made two hundred fifty million dollars plus whatever he made in endorsements, which probably wasn't much, but it was something. Hey, but, it was some you know, Dunkin' Donut commercials, man. It, it's 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 not like it's not like he did an Andrew Luck, and and and, and like retired halfway through what should have or what should have been halfway through his career. I right, said, you know what? I'm twenty nine. I got a lot of cash, and I don't care. I'm done. I'm I'm not going to do it anymore. Eli's got all the money he's ever going to need, and he, he he there was nothing left to prove. He's got he's got two Super Bowl rings. He's got one for one for each hand. Nothing to prove, so no problem. Daniel Jones, on the other hand, he saw the writing on the wall. Daniel Jones, of course, the Giants were going to make him the starter, even if Eli was still around. Daniel Jones would be the starter right now because they need to develop him. And the only way you develop a quarterback in the NFL is to have him play games. Yes, he's going to get beat up, and then today he would have gotten beat up a lot more 
if Bosa and Thomas would have been healthy. But that was that was fortunate for the Giants. But when you look at the score and you see thirty six to nine, there doesn't seem to be much fortunate about this game. Right, right. So you know, I, but that's that's why I, that's why I kind of feel bad for the Giants is because the re- the receivers are hurt. Sterling Shepard is hurt. <clears throat> um, uh, Saquon obviously out for the season with the ACL. Daniel Jones and and Sam Darnold have that in common where they don't really have a lot of targets. I mean, Daniel Jones has a couple more targets because he's got Golden Tate. Uh, he's got Darius Slayton, so at least he's got some guys to throw to. But even so, seventeen for thirty-two for one hundred seventy-nine yards, and he still turned the ball over too much. That was that was the big bugaboo about him coming out of Duke. Was, was you know he fumbled a lot. He he didn't necessarily make the best decisions um, with the ball. Uh, he still can't figure out his own. Uh, right, right. You know, so he he's got some issues as a quarterback, but you know it's it's it, at least he has a couple of players around him. Whereas Sam Darnold just has nobody. And yeah, then, it's, it's, I think it, it just looked bad on on Sunday with the Jets. It just, oh my God, yeah. It was it was embarrassing because the Forty ers when when the Forty ers have a complete team, they are a contender for a Super Bowl. That's how good they are. They they're still that good. Um, the the Indianapolis Colts, they're uh, they're a nine and seven team, maybe an eight and eight team. I mean they're 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 a middle of the pack kind of a team. They're, they're a team that was so desperate for a quarterback that they signed Phillip Rivers, who, who did a Peyton Manning, as you call it. You know, he left the, he left the Chargers. The Chargers said, you know what, we're done. Uh, and, you know, we, we're not going to pay you $30 million to stick around. Right. So Phillip Rivers went to the Indianapolis Colts and said, hey, you know, how, how about how, let's, let's work something out. And they worked something out. And Jacoby Brissett, who was the starter last year, now becomes the backup. And Rivers will be there for a year, maybe two years. Who knows? But you know that's that's how desperate they were to try to upgrade their quarterback position. And, right, right. You know, so I don't know. It's it's it's, it's such a mess. It really is. It, it, the, the Jets are 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 such a disaster. Um, you know, they they got they got a touchdown in the first quarter, which which I, I, in fact not even I think I know was the first time they'd scored a touchdown in the first half this season, but you know, they, they, they were never in this game. It was, was, it was 17, seven at halftime. Then it was 31, seven after the third quarter. And then it was, it was just, you know, that's, it was just add, keep piling it on. And, and Sam Darnold, 17 for 29, 168 yards, three interceptions. Can't I mean, that it's, way. A, it's a terrible game for Sam Darnold. Yeah. Then when the thing is, when do you start blaming Sam Darnold? Do you start blaming no. No, uh, Gase. Do you start blaming the I fact blame, that yeah, blame, there's no front line? I, I blame entirely on Gase. I can't blame Sam Darnold for anything with this team because I, I look at it and and look what's around him. All right, Jets receiving Braxton Berrios, four catches for sixty four yards and a touchdown. Kalen Ballage, five catches for forty four yards. Who are these guys? I don't no know idea. them. I do <laughs> not know them. I, you know, Kalen Ballage went to Arizona State. All right? They don't make receivers at Arizona State. That's not where they go. All right? Braxton Berrios. I don't even know who he is. Where, where, where did he come from? All right. He went to Miami for the sixth-round draft pick of, of, the, new, of the New England uh, Patriots in 2018. So does it sound like he was destined for greatness when he was picked in the sixth round? No, so no. I can't. It's hard for me to blame Sam Darnold for anything that's going on because here he is in his third year with the Jets, and they still have yet to put anything around him. I, you know, I, I don't understand why it has taken so long for for the Jets to say, "All right, we have a franchise quarterback. We need to build an offense around this kid." It's never happened, and and the fact that it's never happened, you you can't blame that on Sam Darnold. No, because but he, you know his his career might be over by next year if nothing else happens. No, some, I mean the, somebody somebody will take a chance on him. I mean this, this is the problem. Is that well, the well Chance, Ryan Fitzpatrick is still around, so who knows? You know? Well, yeah, of course Ryan Fitzpatrick. Actually, Ryan Fitzpatrick had a good game yesterday. But Sam Darnold is, is in a situation where he was highly regarded coming out of USC. He's still only twenty three years old. That's right. the other thing. All right, he's in his third season in the NFL, and he's 23. 
So he was a young kid coming out. He hasn't, he, you know, he's had, what, three head coaches. He, he's had who knows how many offensive coordinators, probably the same number. <laughs> so how, how do you put anything on this kid when, when he first started, his line was Swiss cheese. He, had, he still, he, who was, tell me who the best receiver Sam Darnold has ever had to throw to. Right, that was know. available to be thrown to. Well, right. well that's no, what I'm saying. I'm, in, in three years, who who is the best receiver Sam Darnold has had? I, I can't even think of it. So, so that's my point. Is is that the, the Jets' receiving core? The Jets need an elite receiver, and and why they haven't gone out to sign that guy is 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 just completely done. It, it, it just shows how poorly run this franchise has been, and and that goes that goes to to even before Sam Darnold because they traded two, three number two picks to to, to move up to get him. And, and fine, I didn't even have a problem with that. But you still have to put a team together, and and you need to get, you need to get him targets and and legitimate targets to 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 throw to. And and the offensive upgrade, you you almost have to if you have a quarterback like this, you almost have to just focus on the offense in the draft, and in free agency, you have to yeah. you have to beef up that side of the ball and just hope your defense can can do enough to win games because if. If I'm drafting a quarterback like Sam Darnold, I, I'm going to recognize that by year year two or year three, I, I'm I'm looking at winning games 35 to 30, because I need to I need to give my my young franchise quarterback every weapon I can to make him successful. And no, just I just haven't, just haven't done that at all. They haven't even come not, close to doing that. Not even close. Um, by the way, brother, um, this past week, Gail Stas died. Yeah, that was said. And um, I thought we might Brian's, see Brian's song. I thought we might see it somewhere. I thought somebody would play it. We did. It, nobody... Channel thirteen. Channel thirteen played oh, Saturday they? night. Oh, yeah, my bad. Yeah. Good, good job, Channel thirteen. And uh, I'm not sure if it was scheduled, but uh, it probably wasn't. It, it was. It was great to watch. I mean, I haven't seen it since we saw it as kids. Oh, I've and seen it a bunch of times. It's I, a great I movie. It's a great I'm, movie. One, one of those movies. If you ever see it when you when you're flipping through the channels, yeah, if you ever see, boom, stop. Put the remote well, down. It's I'm watching it's, it. Whatever, it's whatever. definitely a guy movie. You know, you know the first movie many guys cried at probably. Um, were, were made it okay to cry, but I, I you know they, they downplayed his cancer in the sense that they didn't say it was testicle cancer. Um, that which is what he had. Pickle. So yeah, yeah, because well, you know, it was it was the movie was made in what? Movie 1971. Was made in, yeah, exactly. So no, nobody said nobody said the word that word. Oh, I know in, that. In but 1971, they also have said since that if it happened today, they would have. Uh, and when it was captured early, it, it's something you can beat now. Right. That's how much cancer has changed uh, in dealing with it and, and keeping you healthy or, or alive. I guess you should say. Back back um, then in, in the 60s and the 70s, if you got cancer, it was like it was like you're dead. Yeah. Nowadays, so, not and, at all. And, and there now, was Billy made a lot Williams, of a lot of good medical advances. Billy D. Williams and John, uh, Jimmy yeah. Conn and That's and a he was supposed to. It was supposed to be Lewis Gossett. Lewis Gossett really? was supposed to, yep. And he, he, he tore his Achilles or something playing basketball. Ooh. And he had to, and then, then uh, um, you know, then Billy D came in. So well, and Aaron Bowen. Yeah, so, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's still a great movie, and it's a great football movie, and it's Gail Sayers, and, you know, there was, there was something about it. They made a remake in, in like, 2001, which I've never seen, but... Um, I'm pretty sure it's tough to beat. You know, uh, the, I'll tell you what, bro. The chemistry trying, of Jimmy Conn and Billy D. Williams. I'm trying to think about it now. Jimmy and Billy Billy D. Definitely has some swag to him. He was he's, he's always been a swag kind of guy. But Gail Sayers wasn't a swag kind of guy. No, Gail no. Sayers was 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 you know humdrum, down to earth. He was he was kind of boring. Is really what it comes down to. But a hell, everybody in the NFL, hell of a man. Like, like yes. one of the one of the best human beings you will ever meet. Yep, and um, one of the gr- and, and, great. And Lewis, Scott, until he Lewis got hurt. Gossett, Lewis Gossett might have might have done. He, he he probably would have been a little bit closer personality wise to Gail right. Sayers. Yes. But you know you can't argue you can't argue with with with, with James Conn and Billy D. Williams. I mean, no, it was, it was a great. It was, it was, I, like I said, I caught it in the middle. <coughs> Excuse me. So I didn't see the Take whole drink, thing. Bro. But Take a drink. But it was great. It was great just watching it. You know and. You know, they, they, whoever, at Channel 13, someone thought, you know, hey, they said, hey, we have the rights. Let's show it. Yeah, So it, exactly. was, it was nice Good to job. see. Good job. I, I, it was I, nice I, to I, see. 
Everybody listen to send twenty send twenty bucks to channel thirteen. Okay, brother. We have about six minutes left and we can finally get to the Islanders piece we've been trying to do for the last two weeks. Since well, no, the last last lost. week. Last last week we, that, we tried and, and you know Well, we, yeah, but we, we did sadly that. we so gotta this, we gotta keep talking about bad second, football. This is the second week, brother, so it's two weeks. Oh yeah. But so well, let, right. let's, let, let's first of all say that uh, that the Tampa Bay Lightning are leading the, the Dallas Stars three to two um, with with game uh, game six, uh, I believe, is tonight. Um, and also, you know, the thing about uh, what's going on um, with uh, uh, Tampa Bay is they almost on Saturday they almost won in, in, in overtime, right. and they would have been uh, I don't know if it was the first team, but one of the only teams who win. All three rounds, or all the rounds of their um, of their, uh, their playoff rounds, playoff rounds uh, yeah. in overtime. In yeah. play, you know, so well, don't get me started with that, brother. The referees have been killing me. But yeah, tonight, uh, Game Six, uh, Tampa Dallas, uh, eight p.m. on NBC. That uh, that'll, that'll be a must view because if they do win, they'll be you know you lift in the Stanley Cup, the greatest and, trophy and, in all of sports. And also, one more thing before we start, but the Islanders. Yeah. Um, Ratings for the NBC airings of um, the NHL has been very good, considering we're in September. Most of the time, these games are airing in June, and their ratings are there because there's nothing else on. Uh, we're starting to see new television programming for the fall, and, and NBC has been getting decent ratings with uh, with their uh, hockey. So good yeah. for hockey, and Gary Bettman has something to talk about for the next year. The, N- the NHL... The NHL playoffs are always good viewing, brother. So that's, it's, yes, it's always know. very exciting viewing. Um, so let's let's talk about the Islanders, brother, because um, they made the conference finals, which not everyone thought they were going to do, uh, right. and they they looked good, but there's a lot of little holes that they have to fix. So yeah, there's a couple know. big holes they got to fix too. Well, Thomas uh, Grice is a free agent, so yeah, and I don't think he's going to going to come back. I, I, I yeah, certainly. Either. I certainly would not would not look to, to sign Thomas Grice. Um, I mean, I, I I think he's fine, but in terms of you know, I, I'm looking at how do the Islanders you know make a leap, and and I'm not sure that you know some of these guys on the roster right now are, are worthy of, of them making a leap, and and you know, Grice is one of those guys. I, I hate to say it, but that he's one right. of those guys that. You know, the Islanders can do better, and you know they they have a goalie in their system uh, named Ilya Sorokin, who's a, a Russian goalie. He's been playing in the KHL for a bunch of years, and and I know that Lou Lamarillo has been trying to get him to come over because the Islanders drafted him years ago, um, and I think he's coming over for next season. And, and if that's the case, then the Islanders don't have to look for a goalie at, at, in in the free agents or in the free agent market because you can just keep you know Sorokin. And um, uh, Varlamov w- would be a, a perfectly fine one-two. Uh, in fact, I think probably as the season goes on, Sorokin or uh, you know, Sorokin probably would turn into the number one goalie. Right. Uh, assuming, assuming, of course, he lives up to the expectation. This kid is supposed to be phenomenal. Um, but what the what the Islanders desperately need, as far as I'm concerned, is is a goal scorer, like a designated sniper. Uh, and one of the things that we have talked about on the show several times is the balance that this team has and how good that is. And, and, you know, the the fact that you don't know where the goals are going to come from, but at the same time, I would like to know where some of the goals are going to come from. Um, uh, You know, Brock Nelson led the team in scoring in goals this season with 26. You know, that's when, when your team doesn't even have a 30 goal scorer, that's, that's not a good thing. You know, you need, you need that one guy who is going to be, you know, the sniper and, and who is able to, to when you need a goal, he goes on the ice and he gets you a goal. And and they don't have that right now. And, and I don't know where that comes from because, you know, I've looked at the free agent market for the NHL and there really aren't snipers available. Um, you know, obviously Taylor Hall is going to be one of the most attractive prospects because he's a left winger. He's been an MVP. Uh, he, he's, he's probably more of a passer than a scorer. But he is a guy who can score 35 goals in a season. And if you put him on a line with Matthew Barzal, I, I think obviously that would help Taylor Hall, and, and he'd probably put up at least 70, 80 points. But how much is it going to cost 
to sign a player like Taylor Hall. So that's, you know, I, I would love it if they could get another guy like Anders Lee and another like a power forward kind of a type who you know, can go out there and, and bang bodies and score goals. And, but the problem is there aren't that many guys like that in the NHL. Right. And, and so, one thing also about the Islanders, Tim, is uh, next year, if there is a season, we assume there is, they're playing at the Coliseum, and then the year after that, it's, you know, at Belmont Arena or the UBS Arena, whatever they're calling it. They're going to need someone either for next season or the year after to go get people going to buy season tickets. So they, they actually that's, might spend some money. So that's, that's another consideration, but you have to also look at the salary cap. I mean, the Islanders might have to do a little bit of juggling with some players and let a couple of guys go or trade a couple of guys because some of the guys, some of the players who they have, who they're paying, you know, five million, six million dollars a season, they're they're not playing up to the money. You know, Brock Nelson with twenty six goals and twenty eight assists. I you know I'd love love to keep him, but Josh Bailey fourteen goals, twenty nine assists. That's it, it's you know that's, and, I, and I like Josh Bailey. I think I, I do too. But the, the yeah. numbers just aren't there. And you know, even Anders Lee only scored twenty goals this year. I mean, he's a guy though. I like I like his leadership. He's he's I love Anders. Lee. I, I think he's a great I love captain. And, I love Barzell. I love yeah. I like uh, Anders Lee too. But I'd like him a hell of a lot more if he scored 30, 30 goals instead of twenty. Well, so would I. You know, so that's you know even you know it's it's just you know the the money that the guys are being paid has to fit right. with the production that they're that they're that they're giving. Uh, right. and, and and this team needs to get younger too. I mean, that's the other thing. Well, you know, we'll, 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 we'll see what to, happens, brother. We're we're at the end of our show. Yes, brother. Another show is done here from the press box. I am Rob Leonard. Joining me, of course, is my brother and co-host and award-winning sports writer Tim Leonard. And uh, thanks everyone for listening. This becomes a uh, show on Spreaker, a podcast on Spreaker and other places. Uh, please listen there if you haven't heard the whole show. And uh, thank you to Sean Novak for keeping this on the air. We'll talk to you next week. Take care and bye-bye.